ladies. It's so nice to hang out with women. Can you help me and give your loudest, most heartfelt praise to Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. You know, as long as you're alive, your life still has purpose. And so you can praise the Lord. Amen. There's a very old song that has come to my head. Mint, you'll be fine. A very old hill song. It says, hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Can we sing that one more time? Hear these praises from a grateful heart as I find the lyrics. Hear these praises from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, the praises start. I love you so much. I love you so much. The song is called Love You So Much. Lord, I love you, my soul sings. Lord, I love you, my soul sings. In your presence, carried on your wings. In your presence, carried on your wings. I love you so much. Come on, tell him, Jesus, Jesus. I love you so much. And how my soul longs for you, longs to worship you forever in your power and majesty. I lift my head, I lift my heart, I lift my I lift my voice towards the heavens. Voice towards the heavens. For you are my son and shield. For you are my son and The praises start. I love you so much, sweet Jesus, Jesus. I love you so much, Lord. I love you, hey, Lord. Carried on your wings, I love you so much. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I love you so much. How my soul, how my soul longs for you, and how my soul longs for you.
so much Jesus I love you so much oh I love you I love you Lord I love you so Give him praise in the house. Amen. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for giving us a future that is assured to be good. Thank you for doing away with the barrier of sin that we may come boldly to our Father. Thank you that you restore our souls. Thank you for giving meaning to our lives. Thank you for removing the barrier of our past and our circumstances and giving us a true hope that is found in you. Thank you for every woman watching, sitting in the room today, listening, and for what you're about to do in our lives because, Lord, the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding. And Lord, when your light comes, we rise. So thank you that today, we have an opportunity to rise in you and in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, give it up for Jesus. Woo -hoo. Please be seated. Welcome to the Royal Sisterhood 2023. Can you help me appreciate the team that put together this event in record time? Led by Pastor Angela on behalf of Pastor Ari. Thank you so much for thinking about the women and loving them, loving us, bringing us together to experience community and fellowship. I want to start today, I was thinking about the last the one I remember at least before the lockdown isn't that the one yeah it was 20, 2020 or 2019 2020 eh? I just remember Apostle told from the story of Mary do you guys remember it was unforgettable for me it was a big it was one of those days that I will not forget um, because that someone was very powerful talking about carrying I don't remember the exact title, but it was about carrying something supernatural. A seed or something about the thing you carry, basically. Yeah, in your womb. That, that as women, we carry something. And talking about looking for our Elizabeths, who God has placed in our path. Do you remember? We should find that teaching and listen to it again. It was very profound. And it shifted something for me. So, and even today, we gathered because Apostle Mose and Pastor Ari have gathered us. Even in their absence, they are thinking about you. Yeah, they are thinking about you, ladies, and how they can make sure that we are nourished and we are fed. And thank you, ladies, for showing up on extremely short notice. The thing is, some people are going to find out next week that there was a royal sisterhood. <laughs> but you're here. And so I really want us to celebrate Apostle Mose for loving us, for being a good shepherd to us, for thinking about us even when he's hours away. And of course, Pastor Ari, this is her gathering. She's the mother hen in the ministry. Mama wa Fomulunji is telling her, you know, our hope was that she would record the teaching and we would watch it. We wanted to hear her nice, warm, motherly voice which just comforts and heals and does good things. And you know what? Even though she's not here, of course the thing is I cannot represent her. It's not possible. Okay? Yeah, I'm not Pastor Ari because she's just some way. There's just some way she is. She's such a mother. And so ladies, I want us to make noise from here to wherever she is in another country. In the spirit, she will hear us. Pastor Ari, we love you. We love you. We've missed you. Yeah, we love you, we've missed you, but it is well. We will, we will, yeah, we will try. Okay, please be seated. Now today, um, I want to talk to us about something as women 
becoming a woman worth admiring. Right? Yeah. Becoming a woman worth admiring. And I'm going to need some microphones in the congregation. We are having a conversation. So I need two mics in the corner. Uh -huh, already Ruth has one. I will need one on this side and someone standing around there where answers are going to come. Uh -huh. So the first question I want to ask, I want four people, two from this side, two from this side, to tell me who are some of the women you admire in the Bible and why? Now I don't want preachers. I just want you to tell me. Yeah, don't start preaching a whole someone out of the thing. There are hands already. The first hands that went up this side were Pastor Glory and, and Gigi, this side. Sorry, ladies, you put up later. Yeah. And, and, and there was someone there. No, you were near someone. Let her talk. Then you come to these two ladies. Then this side, I never saw. Okay. There's a hand. That hand went up. And there's a hand at the back. I think that's Pastor Victory. Yes. So you run to those two. That, that's it. Okay. Come on. Start. I admire Mary. Put Mary. the mic closer. I admire Mary. It's not easy for you to just say yes to what God is telling you in as much as it sounds so out of this world. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Mary. Mm -hmm. I admire Ruth for her loyalty. Ruth for her loyalty. Wow. Uh -uh, but those hands which went up later, they were up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go on. I admire Jochebed. Jacobed, why? It's, uh, it's not easy to give birth to a child and then you just let go in the river. Yeah, you put the baby in the... That's Moses' mother in case you're wondering who Jacob, Jacobed is. I want to help you, my sisters. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Okay, I know you already knew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, everyone here knows Jacobed. What are we even talking about? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, let's continue, Bishop. I admire the Shunammite woman. Hey. Yeah, because sometimes as women, it's easy for us when we are going through something to maybe put on a long face, go to people, cry about her thing, but she kept on saying, it, it is, is well. well. It is well. Yeah. If you don't know who the Shunammite woman is, we need to talk. Because we have preached entire sermons about her. It's not possible. All right, so we'll have, let's go this side now. We've done this side. Let's go this side. Hey, what happened? Right, I admire Lydia. She financed the gospel. Come on now. Are there any Lydia's in the room? Example, like Lydia is in the Bible. Sister Lydia is the one who financed Apostle Paul's ministry. Wow. Uh-huh. I admire Abigail. She was very discreet. A discreet woman. She saved her very strange husband. Mambi, mm. some people. It's okay. There are names which you're like, mm. right, just write down quietly and say, after here, I will know Jacobed, I will know Lydia, I will know mm, Abigail. Mm, and Ashunamite. Mm, don't worry, we are here for you. I admire Esther because she stood in the gap and took the leadership. Mantle. Yay, finally a name we all know. <laughs> Go to Pastor Victory. She had put her hand up earlier. I think that will be the last one. She had already, it was Abigail. All right, thank you ladies for participating. Now, did you, when you were listening, as people were talking about the ladies they admire in the Bible, um, what did you, what, what, are some, what are you hearing beyond the stories of what this and that, what are you hearing as a common thread? You're hearing character, it's about other people. It's all about doing something for someone, doing, obeying God. It had nothing to do with, has anyone talked about the beauty of a woman? Her, her physical appearance was so amazing. Remember that the world is always opposite of what God's word says. Always. Be aware of that. That's why we are fighting constantly. There is, they are at opposing ends. The Bible says it is contrary to God. And I want to ask you a, a, a different question. Again, Mike runners, don't run away. What, what are some of the things that the world says to define a woman as worth being admired? I don't want us to say the names of the people that, that the world admires, but think of those women and say, 
what it is that the world celebrates about them. The people who have 10 million followers online, what, you know, where people admire them, they have pictures of them. What is celebrated about them? Mike runners, just run to people, run to people, run to people, let them speak. Don't say the names, they please, are, we, and we don't want to mention those names here. They are slim. They are what? Slim, slender. Small. S -s -s slender, like Pastor Jean. Pastor Jean, we love you not all the time, though. Sometimes we don't like you very much. Mm -hmm. They have big hips. Oh, hips. So some of them, they are small. Others, they are hips. Uh huh. They look so good in pictures. They, l they like, don't look like they even they have ever even, seen... Like, they woke up. Yeah, makeup. makeup. They like, wake up with makeup, naturally. Yeah, and their hair, they change their look every, like, two days. Okay. And, like, they're always on the beach. Oh, they are at the beach. Oh, okay. They say... Their dress code. Said, Come on now, tell yeah, me about it. They show a bit more flesh, mm, especially yeah. breasts. The breasts, the more bam. voluptuous, the yeah. everything these days. Actually, now breasts are no longer. It's the not shoulders. enough. You have to show even shoulders. Show what is shoulders? Also, you. You have to show everything possible. Yeah, the more the bearer. They, they, they seem well knowledgeable about they always have like a topic they are talking about they know everything they know and, everything and they're they arguing speak, and they speak about everything yeah they, they speak their they truth they don't keep quiet they, they don't keep quiet okay okay they say that they are always figureful they have big nyash eh? they have what <laughs> what's nyash But we have learned some things today. <laughs> um, people have told me not to say the word, so I won't say it. <laughs> okay. okay. So they, they are I've called never socialites. heard it before. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. They are called socialites. They have money. They have money. So we see them shopping, driving benzes, insuring their body parts. Share, yeah. yeah. Insuring body, body parts. parts. Yeah. Did you say insuring? And buying body parts. <laughs> You're insuring yeah. a thing which is going to rot eventually. Interesting. They, Pastor Todza. They are independent. They don't need a man in their life. Yeah, they're independent. They don't need a man in their life. Even a woman. Okay. Okay, we'll go there. Then we'll have to this. this after that, we'll come to these two pastors and we close. Then there are those ones who show off their dub six packed, I don't know, fine boy, no pimple husbands. And that's oh, what you know about I was waiting. I was like, ah, these women who have six packs. Uh, For you, do you have a husband who has a six pack? <laughs> Pastor Jean says yes in the realm of the spirits. <laughs> uh, uh, Mercy, go ahead. They have everything they put. Yeah? They are light First wait, Mercy, then we'll come here. They are light-skinned, long nose, long hair. But like Pastor Barbie, basically. Light-skinned, long nose, long hair. We've suffered in this world. Everyone is bleaching. No one is trying to become black like me. But black beauty, I sent you greetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they have... They look like they have everything figured out. They never have problems. They, they never have problems. Yeah. And they have a lot of money. Mm. Let it be known. Yeah. But, uh -huh. Prophet. Their bodies. Their, eh. They sleep with whom they want, when they want, how they want, oh. with how many people they want. It's a cool thing. Eh, actually, what do they call it? That thing of your body. Like, No, it's about your body and how you're in charge of it. No, it's not self-care. It's not even self-love. It's about being in charge of you. You choose who to sleep with, when to sleep with them, how to sleep with them. What they are basic, and they call it freedom. My body, my choice. And if they find that you have values, they call you old-fashioned, a cake, a fundamentalist, you, frigid. Yeah, yeah, frigid. You know, you're stuck up in life. You don't know how to have a good time. Yeah. 
So I want you to be aware when as a woman living in the world, the world is constantly speaking to us. Billboards, television, radio, men, women, magazines, everything. It's just all over the place. But we must ask ourselves, what does the scripture say? Because there is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against the Lord. <laughs> Ladies, let, if we examine, you yourselves told me the women you, that you admire from the scriptures. How many of them slept with whoever they wanted, how they wanted? How many of them were, were, they were celebrated and written about in the scriptures because of their bodies and their hips? How many of them was it about how much money they had? Everything the world has said defines a woman who can be admired is opposite of what the scriptures say about a woman who should be admired. And if you're not careful, you will find yourself conforming to the world, trying to be the world, the woman the world admires. The devil has shaped the kind of woman that should be admired. And in that has shut up our destinies. Because women, we are naturals. We have wombs naturally, which represent wombs in the spirit. We are carriers of supernatural things. And what the devil does is he silences you by distracting you and making you pay attention to what does not matter. You find that you spend so much time thinking about how you... I remember a time when I was obsessed with how I appeared. It was all about... I felt like I was not beautiful enough. No amount of makeup made it okay for me. I, I was always trying... When, when we were going to parties with my husband, I needed to buy the, a very expensive dress. I wanted to show people that I'm okay. Be beware when you need to prove that you're okay. It means you're not okay. Because when you're okay, you don't need to prove it. When you're beautiful, you don't need to prove it. This whole idea of proving that I'm equal to a man, but I'm equal, why should I prove it? According to the scriptures, he made them male and female in the image of God. It is written. It is already established. So why should I prove it to you? Beware when you feel you must prove a thing. Usually, it, and that's what, it's the first level of temptation. He told, the devil came to Jesus and told him, if you are the son of God, prove it. Did Jesus prove it? No, he told him what is written. Beware when you need to prove to someone something. It's not coming, that thing of proving should be, God proves it. He says that do not be conformed to this world in Romans 12 too, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Then you will be able to prove as your mind is renewed, there will be proof in your life of the will of God. As your mind is renewed to what the word of God says. So today I want us to look at a woman worth admiring according to God. Not according to the world. <laughs> oh, not according to the world. Because the world has set a thing that, that keeps you feeling like you'll never be enough. Because if all the beautiful, the women worth admiring are light skinned and you're dark, what are you going to do? It's over. You will never be worth admiring. Yeah. And their noses are long. You're finished. And their hair is long. It's over. And they, 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 are, they are driving a certain type of car. And they, are, and they are taking... Some of you, I've seen you on social media, trying to be like the women the world admires. Getting tempted to take pictures with some of your body parts showing, showing. Holding a glass of wine. Because that's what they've told you that a woman who the world admires is like. <laughs> what does the scripture say about a woman worth admiring? Proverbs 31, 30. Come on, read it with me loud and bold. Charm is... And beauty is... But a woman who fears the Lord... She shall be praised. She shall be praised on earth. She shall be praised in heaven. Listen, you don't even know what Esther looks like, but you admire her. You don't even know what Miriam looked like, but you admired her. You don't even know what Abigail looked like, but you, ad you don't know what, what horse she was riding, but you admired her. You don't know. You don't know details of the, what you know about them is what they accomplished for God and what they carried. Ladies, 
Charm is deceitful. Beauty is fleeting. <laughs> it's passing. It's fading. It fades away. Eventually, they put you in a coffin in the ground and this thing, this tent, it rots. No matter how much we put on the makeup, no matter how much, me, I keep thinking, that thing makes me feel nothing for things. Because eh? I'm like, what's the point? At the end of the day, this is a tent. I'm just putting on tent clothes. This is a tent. I'm going to put it off and put it in the ground. No matter if you were taller, shorter, you had big boobs, small boobs, big hips, small hips, eventually the tent goes into the ground and maggots eat it. So you can't spend your entire life caring for a tent. Young women, there is more to life than beauty. Beauty is passing. <laughs> and I'm not only going to address beauty, I want us to real talk today. Is it okay if we talk? Yeah, in the kingdom of God, what qualifies a woman worthy of praise and admiration is the fear of the Lord. And you know, in the beginning, when you're a woman who fears God, you look like you're at a loss. I remember in secondary school, we were the Dofis, we were the girls who had no progi, we looked pale, and we were, we were what? We, we were plain gens. You know, if you met me, even to see beyond and marry me, you needed to be a spiritual man like Pastor Jerem. Because I really made sure there was no temptation. Yeah. Yeah? The skirt had to be up to there. Remember, I'm short, really. This is not a new development. So, yeah, this was already there. So you're short. Everything is flowing, holding my canacho path like this. And if I was good, I put lip gloss. If I was good. Vaseline, actually, to be honest. Vaseline and ear pins, which are as small as can be. And I only wore gray, black, and blue. These things of bright colors to attract attention. No, please. I, I'm uh, smiling for what? Yeah, yeah. I'm, more, I'm like, whatever. Now, listen, as long as you're in this world and you're in a tent, we represent Jesus. We look beautiful. But the end of beauty is not beauty in itself. It's really not. It's not that. And you know what? <laughs> Ch we looked like we were the, the ones in school who had no progi. People would tell us to get a life. I remember even when I was on campus. Yeah, so I could never go for anything. We never enjoyed. And I'll tell you the truth. At some point, I started feeling like, mm, aren't we missing out? People looked like they were having fun by having multiple boyfriends. Yeah, they are eating life at campus. You, you're there in the, in, the, in, the, in the mess, eating the mess food. Yeah, uh, yeah, people are escaping to go to club. You look like, for you, you've never done anything. For you, you're just there. You're a dofi. Yeah, you're just there. You're boring. You have no KB. People always know things you don't know. People, you're just like, what's wrong with you? Give it time. With time, the tables turn. A woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Just because you can't tell that someone is pregnant doesn't mean they're not. You might be sitting next to a pregnant person. Give it time. With time, it must show. And with time, the baby must come out. So let's be patient as we serve the Lord. Be patient. The Lord beautifies. He beautifies the righteous. I've seen God beautify me, even physically. If I look at my pictures of 10 years ago and now, there's a difference. Yeah. You see those pictures in DMC, people can't recognize me. When you're doing Discovering Membership class and they show you pictures of when worship harvest began. You can't. I can't even recognize myself. I really can't. Give it what? Charm is deceitful. You know these charming girls? They know how to control a man. They know how to confuse a boy. And maybe you're there, you, you don't know anything. When will you know? You're either, you're either in a mission or community, or you're fasting and praying, you're listening to Bishop Doug, you're doing up more challenge, you're in the gatherings, you're mobilizing people, 
What? You're reading books for HI? You're, where is the time to know how to charm a boy? But we do not see anyone in the scriptures who got a husband because they were charming. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And how do you see the fear of the Lord? How do you see the fear? I'm going to talk about just two things concerning the fear of the Lord. The first one is knowing him. May you be known as a woman who knows the Lord. Not just knows that he exists, but you know him. When I say I know Pastor Florence, it means I have knowledge about her. It means that I have experiences with her. It means that I have information that can help you know how to relate with her. It means that I've spent time with her. It means that I know what makes her happy and sad. I know her strengths and weaknesses. I know. To know God is to have a deep, intimate relationship with him. And that's the foundation of the fear of the Lord. You cannot fear. To fear is not to tremble at him. It's to have an awe. A woman who has awe for God. A woman who is devoted to the Lord. I would like to change that word for today from the woman who fears the Lord to a woman who is devoted to the Lord. She shall be praised. Our first area of devotion is to know God. Spend time knowing God. Spend time with him in his word, in his presence, knowing him. It beautifies you. Knowing God changes your story. You see the thing about knowing God? Knowing God, it's an equalizer in life. Whether you grew up in a home with so much money, another person grew up in a home where there was nothing like money, they were raised on scholarships for you, they took you, I don't know what, when we come to know God, we are equal. We are all children of the living God. We are daughters of the king. We have the same opportunities and privileges and advantages in life. And we advance beyond the merit of being children of God, not on the merit of our background. Yes, I'm talking about knowing God. Knowing that you're a daughter of the king. Stopping to, I, me, I don't identify myself as a Mnyankode. The other day someone was telling, yesterday I think someone told me, you know you're from the West. I said, eh? genuinely. I was like, hey, I'm from the West as in so what? I, it doesn't occur. I'm not, I don't identify by my tribe. I don't identify myself by my family background. I have to remember that I came from a certain district. I really don't. I genuinely identify as a child of God, as a kingdom citizen, as one with privileges and opportunities, as one who can conquer the world in my generation. Oh yes, because I'm a child of God. I'm limitless and that's how you must see yourself. It begins with Before she met Jesus, she was the woman with a bad reputation in the community with five husbands and the sixth one wasn't hers. And she'll see the thing is, when you've made mistakes, even you, you already know. People don't need to remind you. You know, actually, you know more than anyone. You fight those demons yourself. So you don't need someone to come and remind you. And I tell you, it is not God who reminds you of your mistakes. Never. He says that as high as the heavens are above the earth, that's how, that's how much mercy he has towards you. And as far as the east is from the west, they can never meet. He has removed your sin from you. It doesn't define you, so stop defining yourself by the mistakes of your past. You're not praised by how many good things you, how, how, how many nice things you did. A woman who fears the Lord is the one who will be praised. Not a woman who made no mistake in her life shall be praised. Those women, you remember, made, some of them made mistakes, but they recovered when they met Jesus. Yeah, the woman at the well, Jesus turned her, one encounter with Jesus, turned her into an evangelist. One. Yes. 
The women who financed the gospel for Jesus, they were women who made mistakes. The world, of course, talks about people who have never made them. Even in the church, we do that. We praise the women who are quote-unquote perfect. Of course, there's no one perfect. All of us have made mistakes. It's not the woman who has lived a almost perfect life. She shall be praised. Oh, a woman who has lived a cantankerous life, she shall be praised. No, it is a woman who fears the Lord. Both those who have made big mistakes and small ones, if they choose to fear the Lord, they shall be praised. A woman who is devoted to the Lord shall be praised. Your devotion can change today. From being devoted to your family background, some of you are devoted to your past mistakes. You define yourself by a thing you did. You see, we don't know the name of the woman at the well. We just know her story. And some of us, you're carrying a label right now. I'm saying, give up the label, pick up Jesus. Let your label be the daughter of the king, a child of the living God. <laughs> we, know, we, don't know, we don't know Mary Magdalene or Ruth or the woman at the well because of anything apart from they knew God and they were known by him. It's what changed their story. It's what puts their story in the Bible. They encountered Jesus. That's what is going to give you an advantage in your generation. When you start to see yourself as one who has encountered the Lord. We must go back to that place where we are so proud to be called children of God. And what comes with that rights to be children of God. Knowing God will change your story. I want to show you a few verses. Psalm 45 verse 13. Can you read it with me? I love that verse so much. It says, The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. Are you seeing that picture of you? You are the... Today is the royal sisterhood. Royal daughters. Can I tell you something? When Jesus looks at you, he says, She is all glorious within. She is all glorious within. That is his testimony of you. Some of you, the biggest hindrance right now to your glory is how you see yourself. Has nothing to do with how God sees you, but you have embraced a version of you that God doesn't see. When he sees you, he sees glory. <laughs> he doesn't see flaws, issues, mistakes. He doesn't. He sees glory. He has clothed you with righteousness and grace. Let go of that label you have placed on yourself. The one who failed in her marriage. The one who had an abortion. The one who dishonored her parents. The one who never finished school. The one who, I don't know what it is that you've carried. And it's the constant thing in your mind that condemns you. That's not how God sees. When I say knowing God, that's what I mean. I'm not just talking about only receiving him. I mean recognizing yourself as a daughter of the living God who is beloved. It's one of the things that will make you praised. Because you live from the reality that you carry about yourself. Do you see yourself that way? The king's daughter. Is all glorious within. <laughs> so the first thing, what did I tell you is the first thing that, that is in, there are two things we're talking about. Number one is what? Knowing God. And by that I mean, real knowing, like knowing him as your father, recognizing yourself as a beloved daughter, and living from that truth. Because God doesn't make mistakes. You're not a mistake. Let me tell you, as long as you're alive, you still have purpose. If God was out of purpose for you, you'd be dead. If you're alive, you still have purpose on this earth. As long as you're alive, you still carry purpose. You people, you're starting to scare me. So the first thing is serving, knowing God, and the second thing is serving God. That's it. If you want to be a woman who shall be praised, know God, serve him. These women you all told me that you admire in the Bible, they are known for knowing God and serving a certain purpose of God in their generation. That's it. 
That's what is going to make you a woman who will be praised in your family, a woman who will be praised at your workplace. I'm telling you, I've seen God do things for women. Eh? Who are their workplace? People are getting promoted without asking for promotions. I, I, right now, when I look around, I see at least three of them that I know this year. We are in March. They got doubling of their salaries, and all of them, it's strange. You get an email. Yeah, and they say, double so-and-so salary. Without even, some of them, without even changing their title or whatever, just change it. Why? They have come to a place of knowing God and serving his purposes in their generation. I was teaching the other one and telling some people that you see, if, let me see who here works in a regular job, like you have Monday to Saturday, you work in an organization. Okay? Pastor Claire, where do you work? UVR. So you work at UVR? Ayavi. Ayavi. You work at Ayavi. So if I came to Ayavi or tomorrow and I introduced myself and told them I'm a pastor, I love God, I'd like to get on your payroll. I would like a salary for the man. They can't allow. If I cry. If I show them, if I tell them my father is Apostle Mose, what if I take my books which I've written, I show them that I'm an author. What if I show them that I'm more qualified than you to do the work you're doing? And I tell them I want, I want a salary. I've not yet worked, but I want a salary. It won't work. They will call security. What if I really cry loudly? And I start calling my grandfather's name. Why are we crying? Because women, no, we like crying for God. Ah. Okay, so it can't work. So, before you worked at Ayavi, if you went there and asked them to pay you, would they pay you? Eh? Seems Ayavi is complicated. Are there other people at your workplace for you? You have it's a different, I can come tomorrow and they pay me. So what makes you get paid at that workplace? First of all, you got employed there. You have a contract and then you work there. Now, so for, and you're present, you real work there. So me, I want to ask, I show you a verse. It's not the verse for today, but I just want to show you. John 15, 16, they are there. I show you. Because, Auntie, we, we want to be on God's payroll and we want, we want the privileges of being on God's payroll, but we don't. But we are like me going to Ayavi and screaming and saying, Lord, I want the privileges of the people who work in this organization even if I don't work there. Can we read it? What does it say? You did not choose me. Can I ask you, at the workplace where you work, is it you who chose them or they chose you? They, cho they chose you because at the end of the day they had options. Yeah, they put out an advertisement. You might think you chose them, but they chose you. Mm. So they chose you. That's the first level. After choosing you, what did they do? They did what Jesus did for you. They appointed. You got an appointment later. So God chose you and appointed you. And then they gave you what you call a job description. That the job description is that the appointment letter. This is now time for you to go and do what? bear what if I say uh -uh, me I don't like bearing fruit I'm appointed but I don't like bearing fruit but I want a salary hey, at Ayavi, what, what, I am appointed to be the administrator but me I like dancing so I will yeah I can't even make it to work but I expect a salary that's what we are doing to Jesus he chose you he gave you an appointment letter and a job description which is bear fruit and fruit which lasts. And then he says, if you do that, comma, what's the point? That you get a salary. The point is that whatever you ask the father, someone is getting it. The point of being chosen, being given an appointment letter and a job description is that you get a salary. Isn't it? Or it's that you spend time just work working. If the month ends and you got an appointment letter and you showed up and you did your work according to the job description and they didn't pay you, what would you do? You sue them. 
you call HR, you do something. Now, many of us, we are banging on the gates of heaven, saying, Lord, whatever I ask the Father in my new name, you said you give it to me, says, ah, ah, Gundi, I chose you, I appointed you, I took, bear fruit. When you bear fruit that lasts, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. That, ah, ee, that's how you are. I know you're, you're receiving it deep inside. So the privi- there are different pri- privileges of sons are different from privileges of people who work. Servants. So the first thing I told you is know God. That's become a son. After knowing God, join the workforce of heaven. If you want to be paid. If you, now let's say that I have you as my family company. Nyamunange, it's the one they told me. Let's say it was our family company. And Pastor Lynette was my daughter. Hmm? If Pastor Lynette is my daughter, but she does not work in Ayavi, will she get the privileges of employees? But she's my child. She's my kid. We share blood. That's very nice, but she's not employed. Can't she go to the HR and ask to be paid? People are laughing. Yeah, what if she gives the HR a prophetic word? Can they pay her a salary? But, but, but if, if Pastor Lynette, even though she doesn't work in the family company, when she comes home as a good parent, don't I give her food? Don't I give her clothes? Don't I give her shelter? If she wants to go for royal sisterhood, don't I give her a driver to take her to royal sisterhood? There are privileges for sons and there are privileges for workers. There are things you will never, there is praise you will never enter into until you join the workforce of heaven. Because that verse ends with that one. There is a comma and then it tells you the end of this matter. Why I chose you and appointed you and then gave you a job description to bear fruit which lasts, which is winning souls, making disciples. He says, Why? Those who win souls and make disciples, those who bear fruit which lasts, whatever they ask the Father in my name, I will give them. That's the same thing about Matthew 6, 33, where he says, seek first, not second, first prioritize the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all, all these things which he's talking about in that chapter, which people are chasing after. They will be added to you. There are privileges I had when I worked at the company I worked at. They would give me fuel for the month. They would give me car maintenance. They would give me allowances. I had, I had a card for insurance, for medical. The moment the appointment ended and I stopped bearing fruit for them. They took away my medical after all the years of working there and bearing fruit. When we stop bearing fruit which lasts... There are privileges we are no longer privy to in the kingdom. Like all these things being added to you. That's why we can be all children of God and there are things being added to your neighbor and not to you. Why? Fruit bearing. I know you're understanding. The thing with me is you can't fail to understand. that the, I don't carry the anointing of complication. The anointing I carry is you understand. You walk away and you really understand. Knowing God changes your story. Serving God changes the stories of others. And that's what makes you a woman worthy to be praised. If all you did is change your story, you won't be praised much. We'll admire you, but not too much. But when your story changed the stories of others, oh, you will be praised. You will be praised in the gates. People will be talking about you and you don't even know they are talking about you. Today someone took a screenshot of someone's status this morning and sent it to me and said, Mama, I know you don't know how to check status, but someone has written something very, very beautiful about you. I thought you should see it. And as I, I keep telling people, you know, I look at those things and I'm like, now me, I have nothing to offer. The only reason why you like me is I've delivered to you a message from the Father. You know when you like a delivery person, every time you see them at the gate, you know a gift has come. They become your friend. You start saying, man, I like that person. I don't even know why I put it on Wagala because they bring you good things. I have nothing to offer because when I look at my background, where I came from, I went to schools you don't know. 
Some of them no longer exist. Don't put up your hand if the primary school you went to no longer exists. Just keep quiet. Look, look ahead. Just fear God. <laughs> That's it. If you want to be praised, it's not about, you know, I used to think that I'll never have a future. Because when I would look at myself, especially Christmas time when we would hang out with the cousins who are from Kampala. And remember, originally I was from Kampala. Then I went to that village. And you're there in a school, you're in Chinyasano Primary. Then Rukunjiri Universal. And you're there, your, your English is really Runyankwere pretending to be English. And you see people crying. You, if someone walks away crying because they've had your accent, they go and cry and say, she is, but now they say, we're going to make it in life. And you hear them. And every time you meet people, all they give you is pity. Often by the age of 10, fully, mother and father dead. Moved to that deep village. I, I could not afford to dream. What was the point of dreaming? Dreaming was painful. About what? I just hoped that I can make it tomorrow. I reached a point in my mind where I thought, one day I think I might be a house help if I make it in life. Like, that was what I thought. There's a friend of mine called Laura. I'm sure she's watching. She's in the UK. She knows I reached out to her at some point and asked her if she could consider getting me a job like that. Because I thought, if I don't finish S6 a certain way, I don't know if government doesn't take me on. And I know that my relatives would have still paid for me university, for goodness sake. But in my mind, I didn't deserve anything. I would wake up in the morning and toil in the homes because I wanted to get their approval. Because I'm already here eating your food, you didn't plan for me. Living in your house, you didn't plan for me. You're paying my fees. I felt like a burden every day of my life. What was the point of dreaming? I would hear people dreaming and I'm like, enjoy. There's no point dreaming. Just live another day. I didn't want to think of, I desire to get married. For what? No one will ever choose me. So I, I won't even try to make myself dream of marriage. So I told myself, I don't care and I don't want to get married. Why? No one will choose me. I'm ugly. So who cares? So maybe you, but you see, I encountered God. And I started to see myself as a daughter of the king. I started to see myself as one worthy of love. I started to understand that, you know what, I can even choose who to marry. I even was able to say no to some men. But originally, you see, you don't understand when I tell you that one time I met a young man. When I got out of a taxi. Mm, I don't think I've told this story publicly. But I got out of a taxi in Chitintale and when I walked out, there was this man, ramshackled, dirty, you know these men who say, sister, 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 size young, like that. I was in first year university, I think. And so I, I, used to, I used to be so scared to tell a taxi conductor to stop the taxi and I get out. So I would wait for someone to stop the taxi after my place, which I was supposed to get out of. Is, so then I walk back because I felt like if I tell the taxi conductor, he'll abuse me. Like who am I to tell a person to stop the car? I thought so little of my, you don't understand. That devil can get you and reduce your entire life to one thing that happened in your life, like losing a loved one, or like being raped, or like being abused, or like going through torture emotionally, or like losing a loved one, or like an abortion that you had, or like someone who left you and tell you you're nothing. You can't even tell a taxi conductor to stop the taxi. I could not tell a taxi conductor to stop the taxi. I would wait for the next person. There's a time they took me out, like in Boise. I was supposed to have come out in Makere. At night, I was out of transport. I didn't, I started crying, figuring out what am I going to do because I could not tell. My mouth couldn't open to say, Masao. So I get out of this taxi, and I can't forget the man. He was called Lawrence. And he follows me. Sister, he's there wearing dirty blue things, eh? smelling, can barely speak. Sister, sister, size young. And I, I, I was like, I, I'm, he's talking to me. I have to talk to him. Who am I to even refuse a man to talk to me? And he asked me for my phone number. And I gave it to him. I gave him my real phone number. Not a forged one. Then he started calling me. 
then I could never use that route again. So I would have to walk behind because I feared that I'll meet him and then he will feel bad that now I, I refuse to talk to him. Then he'll, Because I had issues. Ladies, I know you're here, some of you. You dress nice on the outside, but inside something is broken. But there is a healer. His name is Jesus. In knowing him, you will know yourself. You look in a mirror and you see the glory of God. I carry confidence about who I am now. And that confidence doesn't come from being married. doesn't come from having children. doesn't come from going to school. doesn't come from any... It comes from two things. It comes from knowing God and serving him. Serving him has given me purpose in life that I never dreamt of. Has introduced me to places I never thought I could go. Has made me see, see be, impact lives of people I would never impact at a workplace in a career with a PhD. I would never. Ladies, listen to me. If you want to have a life of a woman who will be praised, know God, serve God. In knowing God changes your story. Serving God changes the stories of others in your generation. Serve God. Serving God is better than having a career. You should have a career and serve God. <laughs> Be married and serve God. Have children and serve God. Be single and serve God. Serve God. That's what will make your name remembered in your generation. All those women you remember, you don't even know much about them apart from something they did in their generation. That's a clue of what the scriptures are telling us, how to have a life of significance. If you're at school, be in the school fellowship. Get involved. Be on the worship team. Do something. Be engaged. If, you're, if, you're, if, you, if you had a baby, don't stop your entire life because you had a child. Women had children and served God. Because those children are going to grow up and leave you. You're just a steward. They are not yours. They are God's children entrusted to your care. Raise them and show them the way to go. I love that I've seen our children and the children of many of the people, those of you who serve God, you've seen your children. They love to serve God because that's what they've seen. Our children at eight years of age are talking about planting churches. That's what they see themselves doing. We have to refuse. If you're going to leave home at 4 a.m., the person sleeps when they put their clothes out. Mommy, please. I'm like, no, you have to sleep. No, they start crying. I want to go. I want to go to the church. Which kid is that who wants to go to church at four in the morning? And they are willing to change everything to go. Know God. Serve God. Serving God changes the stories of others. Esther served God. I want to end. When we talk about Esther, she served God in her generation. Esther... <laughs> We know Esther, we know Ruth, we know Mary, Elizabeth, Hannah, Rebecca, Lydia. We know them all because of what they carried and how they served their generation. Let me show you a few scriptures and then I'll, I'll be closing. Genesis 18, 19. Can we read it together slowly? For I have known him. Ah, uh -uh, read together. For I have known him. Why? In order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Why does God know you? Why does he invite you to know him? So that you can do what? So that you can command your children and your household after, after you to keep the ways of the Lord. The end product of knowing God is serving him. If all you do is know God for yourself, you live a small life. There are so many people who knew God, but they are not written about in the Bible. The ones that are worthy of mention are those who served God. Let's look at two more scriptures. Luke 8, 2 to 3. We'll show you the lay women, some beautiful women. Luke 8, 2 to 3, together. And certain women, ah, uh -uh, you guys, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities Mary called Magdalene out of whom had come how many? Uh-huh and Joanna the wife of Chusa Herod steward and Susanna and many others what are they known for? 
They provided for him from their substance. These women supported the ministry of Jesus financially. So they're not written about because they had demons or because they worked somewhere. It's that they financed the ministry of Jesus. You will be remembered for how you served God in your generation. Not for how well you lived, but how much you served. That's what will make you remembered in your generation. That's the fruit that lasts. Daniel 11.32 Together, what does it say? Those who, yeah, those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Uh -huh. But the people, the women who know their God, shall be and carry out. Do you see what knowing God leads you to? You become strong and then you carry out great exploits. A woman worthy to be praised knows God and serves God in her generation. Because knowing God strengthens you, serving him gives you purpose in your generation. The last verse, no, the second last verse. Because the question is, what do you carry and how are you serving your generation? Never let your life be hinged or determined by what you look like, the tribe you came from, the country you come from, the family you've come from, your education level, your career, your marital status. Because Esther wasn't just a married woman to the king. She was known as a deliverer of Israel. Yeah, we don't know her because she was a replacement to the Queen Vashti. We know her because she served her generation and, and that's where we're going to end. You know, you shouldn't just be known by raising children. Rebecca, Elizabeth, Hannah, yeah, Samson's mother, they are known because they raised certain types of children who changed generations. Do you understand? Theirs was not just giving birth, it was service to their generation was producing those children. Yes, and raising them to serve the Lord. It's time to turn off that TV and teach your children the word of God. And carry them with you in the morning, in the afternoon. Let them be there. Hours sometimes you don't know what they have eaten since morning because we are at church from 5 till sometimes 7 p.m. They eat a samosa here and there, a soda. We are training soldiers for the army of God. Give them time. We might look like it's not right, but give them time. So it's, and also your past, the woman at the well, mistakes you've made. Ah, I don't want to get into all that, but I just want to say to you, you are the daughter of the king. You are a servant of the most high God. Those are your two most core identities. A daughter of the king, a servant of the most high God. If you live, if you live your life from that place, you will be a woman worthy to be praised. Today I believe that God wants to heal. Heal people from labels you've carried that have stopped you from being able to know God and to serve him. You think you're not worthy. Or you think you're, you can't do the thing. I don't know whatever it is. But when I look at you women today, I see incubators of purpose. Incubators of purpose. It's boiling inside there. I see nurturers of purpose. Yes, that's what I see. I see people who are wired to reproduce after God. I see women who are going to serve God's purpose in their generation. Not their purpose. God's purpose. There's a difference between your purpose and God's purpose. God's purpose is clear, bearing fruit that lasts, and fruit in the kingdom is souls. Winning souls, discipling people, changing lives, serving God, serving in the ministry, planting churches. Oh yes! By the way, Uganda, we are going to send female missionaries across the world. Powerful female missionaries. We are going to be a phenomenon. They are going to come and study this nation. Women in the church. You know when you're in worship service, you think it's normal. It's very abnormal. But we have an opportunity. <laughs> Ladies, we have an opportunity. We are in a ministry where you can be anything you desire in God. Most ministries, women cannot rise beyond certain places. They, are, they, are only, they can only serve in children's church. Worship team, guest experience. You cannot preach. You cannot make disciples. You cannot pastor. 
plant a church. Are you mad? A woman? No. But we have an apostle who has released women to be everything we can be. So worship harvest women. It's time to arise. It's time to take our place. Because true significance is found in serving God's purpose. A life worth admiring is a life of knowing God and serving God. Even as you stand and we close, I want us to read one last scripture together. It's in the book of Esther chapter 4 from verse 13 to 16. Esther chapter 4 verse 13 to 16. I want you to read this and read it with your heart. Just look at it and see what Mordecai is saying to Esther because I believe that is being said to some of you today together and Mordecai told them to answer Esther because Mordecai had told Esther about the trouble in Israel like how apostle stands here often and tells us how we need to plant churches we need to make disciples people are perishing marriages are dying you know all that and just because for you your marriage is working you don't really because you, you're not in the world you don't know that people are being raped people are being killed people are dying People are making crazy mistakes in their life. Generations are being destroyed. But because in your house, everything is okay. You're like, I don't want to put my life in danger and get into this ministry thing. <laughs> and God is saying to you what Mordecai said to Esther, who had finally escaped being in that world and had entered the kingdom where she was a queen. And she thought she was there to finally be a queen from being an orphan raised by an uncle. You know when you finally feel like, now I'm saved. Ah, I'll never ever look. Eh? I don't want those things of where my friends who are always uh, in the club or what. Mm -mm. I cut them off. I'm fine here. Just create my bubble and live in it. And ladies, we are good at that. We want safety. It needs to be safe. Manageable. Cute. Not messy. Mission is messy. But that's where purpose is found. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther together, loudly, ladies. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all. Don't think you will escape the corruption. Don't think you will escape the moral decay. Don't think you will escape the confusion just because you are in church. And you're with your children and your friends and your girlfriends and all of them are church people and you, you don't care about the entire world out there. That, yeah, where your kids are going to grow up, marry and bring the chaos to your family. And then the entire, like what happened with Lot? He was in the city but he never preached. Eventually they were knocking on his door trying to rape his guests. And he offered his own children to be raped. Virgins, he was offering them instead of the angels being raped. We cannot cut ourselves off from our generation and think that that's the will of God. Where we just close it all out. Make sure I show up on Sunday, read my Bible, pray. My kids don't interact with the neighbor's kids. De -de 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 -de. What? What? Protect my environment, but I don't go on mission. The mission will come to you. Do not think where. What does the scripture say? Do not think. Put it up. Do not think where? In your heart. That you, yeah, it's a heart issue. That you will escape in the king's palace, in the church. More than all the others, other Jews or the other Gentiles or the other people who don't know God. And what's the next verse? He says, for if you remain completely what? If you remain completely what? Because you, you're shy, you can't go on evangelism. It's not in your personality type. It's too dangerous. If you remain completely silent at this time, this time, uh -huh, relief and deliverance will arise for your generation from another place. God is not out of options. <laughs> he will get, bring relief. But you will be forgotten. And there will be repercussions. Relief will come. Be sure of that. But may it come by you and by me. May relief for our generation come from us, ladies. He says it will come from another place, comma, but you.
keep the scripture up. Don't put my picture. But you and your father's house. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I believe that we have come to our generation for such a time as this. I believe we went through the things we went through for the sake of our generation for such a time as this. I believe we have the gifts we carry in our generation for such a time as this. I believe that we were in the families we are born in in our generation for such a time as this. I believe God has allowed us to be here on the earth for such a time as this that we may know him and make him known. That we may know him and serve him in our generation. That we may arrive I speak to you sisters arise mothers arise daughters arise in the name of Jesus arise and take your place arise from your pain arise from your past arise from your limitations take your place in your generation do something in your generation that will leave a mark in history be a woman who carries others be a woman who carries sons and daughters be a woman lift up your voice right now and start to talk to your heavenly father pray in the spirit pray in understanding what do you carry? What do you carry? It will come to pass in your generation. For such a time as this, for such a time as this, start to affirm yourself in the Lord. Start to lay down some of those things and say, Father, I lay down the pain. I forgive. I let go of this thing and this one. I choose to take on my identity as a daughter of the king. I choose to arise in my generation. I choose to serve you, oh God. I'm afraid, but I will serve you like Esther. I'm afraid, but I will serve you, Lord. I will serve you, oh God. I will not be forgotten in my generation. I will make disciples. I'll plant churches. I'll support the ministry. I'll raise strong sons and daughters. Whatever you do in this moment, speak to your father in a language you understand from your heart to him. Arise, daughters. Arise, mothers. Arise, sisters. Relief comes to our generation. For such a time as this. We speak a new level of knowing God. A new level of knowing God. Yakataya Baraba Lebo Sibro Lelebo Sibre de Kayala Lalabos, O Koyana Lalabos, Tayama Mamma 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 Rebo Sibre Telebo, Randa Lalabos, Ibe Kelebo Sitaya Baba Baba, Bete Lalabos, Braba Baba Baba Baba, E Kayala Lalabo, Ladies leaning, leaning right now. For a moment, forget about your neighbor. It's between you and Jesus. Something must change. Something must shift. Pray for your other sisters. Pray for them. Some of you, there are people who are coming to your mind. Just lift them up in prayer to God. Hey, some of you, you need to let go. Let go. Let go. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice to your maker. Go Thank you, Lord. Ladies, the word redeeming time, redeeming time, redeeming time. God is asking you to redeem the time. God is asking you to say yes to assignments. I believe there are people in the room, either your disciple or somewhere in your heart, you've been sensing that God is asking you to do 
to, to, to take on certain assignments in, in mission of communities, in discipling, in zonal leadership, assignments. And God is saying, say yes, say yes. If you're the one, I'm going to ask you to please just run to the front and let's in faith say yes to Jesus. I'm seeing Pastor Jean and I'm, I'm remembering how she moved from being Zono Pastor. Even in being Zono Pastor, she had been withholding and withholding for a long time. And look where she is. I believe you're there. So I'm going to ask you to come. Just come. Come, come, come. Say yes, say yes, you're there. You're there. You're there. You're there. I don't know if Pastor Pitri watched the prayer hour, but if you are here for the prayer hour, you can see what God is saying. Who says yes, yes, I agree. God is being clear to us this morning. He's not missing words. Don't stay back. Don't stay back. Don't stay back. Don't say, come, 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 come. Everything inside you is trembling. You're like, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Sing, just say yes. Just say yes. Yes to planting a church. Yes to leading a zone. Yes to starting a mission or community. We prayed in two purpose. Pastor Petri has come and given us handles. Come, come, just come. You're saying, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what my disciple is saying. Mordecai was Esther's disciple. Naomi was Ruth's disciple. This morning, Prophet Angela was leading us in prayer and talking about serving God with our graces, our giftings, things you do easily. And there's been a tug on your heart to take it a step further. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray in a minute. If you're still there, please come. Please come. Yes, you're there. You're there. There is so much evidence. There is so much evidence. Pastor Bitwi has talked about people who are going to be sent out, missionaries. Yeah, there's so much evidence. It's, it's amazing. Thank you, Lord. All right. going to put your right hand in your chest the ladies at the front your right hand in your chest and if I can have the pastors just lay your hands on these wonderful women of God who are saying yes to the promptings of the Holy Spirit to serve God properly 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 fully 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 I hear the word fully some of you uh, 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 you have a witness, yes, fully. You're coming to the front, you're saying, yes, God, I'm going to serve you fully. Not half-heartedly with my everything. I will do what it takes by the grace of God, by the will of God, not on your terms, not on your terms, on God's terms. God our Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for these women who are saying, yes, God, I am going to serve you fully. I'm going to listen to my disciple and the instructions they have given me. I'm going to listen to the nudging in my heart, the tug, the pull on my heart to take it a step further. Lord, we say yes. Lord, we say yes. We come in faith. We put our hands in yours. During prayer time, you are telling me, put one step ahead of you. God is saying to you, ladies at the front, just do the next thing. That's the, what Apostle says. Apostle says, do the next thing. You don't need to know the full picture. You don't need to have all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed. All you need to do is to do the next thing. Like after this meeting, you know the next thing to do. Do it. And as you take one step and another step, 
and another step, the story God is writing is going to unfold. And you will be amazed. You will look back and thank God that you took that one step. Father, we thank you. We receive your grace. We receive your divine enablement to do the end of faith is action. We receive divine enablement to do what it is you're telling us to do. To be obedient to our disciples. To start that mission of community. There are many people, your disciples have been telling you to start adult MCs. Adult MCs. And you have insisted that are me children, children, children. And someone, not one, not two. Adult MCs. Just start. Just start. You're going to see. You're going to see. God is going to amaze you to plant a church. And you said, no, I'm a woman. No, I'm not yet married. Someone has been refusing to plant a church because you're not yet married. And God is saying, listen, plant the church. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving your disciple reasonable excuses. The real reason is because you're not married, but you have carefully crafted reasons and sent those reasons to your disciple. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. Lord, we, re we receive divine enablement. And we're going to leave this room and act on it. And act on it. And act on it and do the next thing. And Lord, we know you're going to amaze us. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Now, ladies, yes, you can clap for them. They. I'd like you to go send your immediate discipler a message and tell them what it is that you have walked to the front for is that a deal is that a deal ladies is that a deal is it a deal is there anyone here who does not have a direct discipler maybe you're not in worship harvest you're not in a mission or community anyone who doesn't have a direct discipler one just let me see the hand one Two, three. Pastor Flo. Who is Pastor Flores? Could you please talk to these two ladies? And then Pastor Salome, please speak to her. Okay? The rest of us, you're in worship harvest? You have a direct disciple? Send them a message and tell them what you walk to the front for. Praise the Lord. What a good word. What a good word. I'm going to invite us all to stand, to stand, because this is a, a holy moment. It's a good moment. You'd want someone to stand for you in your moment. Don't get tired. Wow. The word has been shared. And God approves his word with signs, miracles, and wonders. So because his word has been shared in this room today and people who are watching online, there's going to be signs, miracles, and wonders. The first big major miracle is sonship. Oh, yes. Let me say daughtership. The first thing Pastor B3 said was knowing God. Knowing God. And she gave an example of knowing Pastor Flo. You know when she wakes up. You know when she goes to sleep. You know what things she likes to eat. And that comes from relationship. Yeah, because you know, you can get into their house. That's how you know. Pastor B3 has also talked about healing today. Yeah. The first order of business in knowing God is salvation. It is salvation. It is knowing God as your father. How awesome is that? That because he's your father, he gives you the car to go for royal sisterhood. And God wants to be your father today. If you're not born again. God wants to be your father today. And this is your day of salvation. Oh yes. 
that today the enemy has no hold on you anymore. Amen. That from today, people talk about you and say your life is significant. Amen. Because today you make the decision that I'm going to know God. And because I can know God, I can then serve him according to his purpose. Because as soon as I say yes to salvation, he deposits, deposits purpose in my life. So you're in the room today, or you're online, and you're not born again. You're not saved. I'm going to invite you to do something very bold and very powerful. Just put up your hand. Say, today I want to get born again. Today is the day of my salvation. Amen. Today I refuse to stay in the kingdom of the enemy. I want to get born again. Yeah, I know it's a public holiday and almost everyone went for progi, those who are not born again. And so you expect that everyone in the room is born again. But I'm inviting you for salvation. Ladies, we are not leaving this place. And someone who's not born again leaves this room without getting born again. The rest of you just, if you're not born again, just put up your hand. Put up your right hand. This is a call for you to know God. You're even going to ask your neighbor, are you born again? Ask, ask your neighbor, mm -hmm. ask your neighbor, are you born again? Are you born again? Hey, don't be afraid. Ask them, Mitch, are you born again? If the person says no, hmm, say, would you like to get born again? People can be shy. Hey, don't be shy. Ask, are you born again? Those people who are sitting and looking at you with their heart, real, ask them. Ask them, are you born again? I'm serious, ladies. I'm giving you an opportunity. I'm even not going to delay. Eh? The, those who are from my location, you know, you can walk through the room. Start walking through the room. Everyone in this room must be given an opportunity for salvation. If you're here and, you don't, and you're not afraid, look, just walk through the room. Walk through the room. Ask people, are you born again? Are you born again? Are you, don't be shy. Ask, 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 ask. Evangelists in this room, we are not leaving anyone not born again. If the person says, no, they are not, then you're going to ask them, would you like to get born again? And when they say yes, you're going to come with them to the front. Deal? Oh, yeah. I love it. Tony Kuswada. doing community evangelism there's someone in the room you saw someone then you feared to go to them this is your instruction to go to them hey yeah you saw someone and you're like praise the lord we have a salvation let there be celebration in the house hey yeah there's a person you saw you saw someone and you feared to ask them go and ask them now go and ask them now go and ask them now you have made the best decision of your life I'm giving you that person a minute, you who feared to ask the person. Oh, yes. You're born again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Has everyone in the room been covered? Just give me a nod of it. Be like, yes, 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 we've asked everyone. Awesome. So can we celebrate that our sister is born again today? Oh yes. Today, March 8th, is for you. You're not too young to get born again. Today, March 8th, is your day. And I hear God saying prophetically to you, 
specifically to you that he's setting you apart. That he is setting you apart. And that there are dreams and things that you had in your heart and in your life when you were younger. Things that you thought were not going to come to pass. And God is saying he's reviving them. I hear him saying that already you feel like you're different. Yeah? Yes, he set you apart. You're going to be different all your life. Oh yes, embrace it. You're going to be different all your life. He has set you apart. You're going to do great and mighty exploits. So can you pray after me? Let's join everyone online. If he's made the decision, yes, to be born again. Let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you that on this woman's day, thank you that on this woman's day, I got born again. I got born again. You are my savior. You are my savior. I am your child. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. I am your servant. Today I make the decision. To know you. To know you. Take my life. Take my life. And do something significant with it. And do something significant. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Now raise up your finger like this. You know, like you like this. Just like your finger like this. Uh -huh, like you're warning someone. Say, devil. I don't know why we point up, but you know when you're like showing someone. Say, devil. Devil. I don't belong to you. I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I refuse the bad dreams you've been given me. I refuse the bad thoughts you've been putting into my mind. I am not rejected. I am not rejected. I am loved. I am loved. I am set apart. I am set apart. I do have a father. And my father is the king of kings. And my father is the king of kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Lord of Lords. He will cover me. He will cover me. He will protect me. He will protect me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you this okay, yeah. We're just going to take your details. Why? Because we want to walk with you. Because you're now a child in the kingdom. We want to walk with you. We want to plug, plug you into a missional community. We want you to get baptized. So they're going to take your details. And we'll holler at you. If you're online and you made the decision today to get born again, the number to call is 0775-642-449. Now, friends, because of time, we are not going to go into the detail of our what, 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 what. This is what I need you to know. One, God is saying, surrender it all. Hmm? Yeah. Surrender it all. Surrender. Even I wanted to sing, then I'm like, ah, time. Surrender it all. Don't withhold anything. Hmm? Surrender it all. And he's going to use you mightily. Second, if there is any issue you came with today, a health issue, a financial issue, a, a heart issue, mm. eh, eh. some of you came here after quarreling. Eh, they, you quarreled to be here. Eh, 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 you're like, eh. A heart issue, a relational issue, a business issue, whatever it is you came carrying today, okay? Our victory is in our praise. The band is going to pray very, very, very loudly, and as they play, tumors are going to fall off. Sons and daughters are going to come who you need. Business doors are going to open. Your heart is going to open to whoever it had been closed to. All those things. So the band, just play loudly. Just lift up your voice. Shout. Clap your hands. Yes, I'm serious. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Someone, your business is being restored and revived. It's a day. It's a day. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Someone was at the doctor yesterday and you came here because you needed the report to change. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. 
You need to surrender it all. My life is not my own. My life is not my own. From today, Lord, to you I, I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. One more time. My life is not my own. Holy Spirit, you know the secrets of our hearts. As we lift our hands today, we give you full access. We speak healing to every heart. We let go of the past today. I hear forgiveness. Someone forgive. Let it go. Let it go. And that means that you live no longer based on that thing. So as we lift our hands, Lord, we let go of the right to be angry, the right to be hurt, the right to hold our hearts back. We let go. We choose to move into the future that you have for us. We let go. We refuse to talk about it any longer, to live from it any longer. We move into the future. We let go of our small dreams. We let go of our inabilities and limitations and, I don't know, mistakes. We let go and we say yes. We say yes to you, to knowing you and serving you. May people arise, Lord, from today who are going to change their generation. May we serve you fully unhindered to the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming. I have had chains falling in this room. I have had chains falling. Yes. Seriously. Yes. And you're going to see a difference yes. as we embrace knowing God and serving him that we may be women whose lives are worth admiring. Over to you, Pastor Angela. And may the grace of our, of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and the and love, the love of, God, of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen.